The biggest lie in tech is that you need a computer science degree to land a dev job. I've seen self-taught devs get hired, earn six figures, and build amazing careers without a degree, without boot camps, and without grinding through four years of university. I'll show you exactly how they did it and how you can do it too. Whether you're from the US or anywhere else in the world, this is the roadmap that's working right now. And no, this isn't theory, this is coming from someone who's been there, made mistakes, and figured out what actually works. Stick around because in the next few minutes, I'll walk you through the exact roadmap that could change your life. By the way, I'm Pete and I've been writing code professionally for the last 13 years. I've worked with some big names in tech, left dev teams, shipped products, broken a few things along the way, and learned a lot from all of this. My job with this channel is simple, to help you learn how to code the right way, skip the fluff, and actually land a job as a developer. No gatekeeping, no BS, just honest advice from someone who's been where you are. What US employers actually care about. Here's the first thing you need to understand. Most companies do not care about your degree, especially if they're startups, remote first, or just care about getting things done. I've talked to recruiters, hiring managers, and devs who got in the door. And you know what they actually look for? They just need these three things. Can you solve problems with code? Can you communicate clearly? And can you work on a team and not make everyone's lives difficult? They're not hiring you to pass a university exam. They want someone who can build and solve real problems. One guy I was mentoring, self-taught dev, no degree, no bootcamp, landed a front-end role at a US startup earning over $135,000 a year just because he built a project that solved a real business problem. Here's what he did. His uncle owned a small warehouse and was managing inventory using Excel. It was messy, slow, and constantly out of sync. So this guy built a simple web app where employees could log stock updates, track low inventory alerts, and generate reorder reports all from their phones. Nothing fancy, no AI, no blockchain. Just a clean UI, real-time updates, and solved a frustrating problem. He walked through the app in his interview, explained the tech behind it, and how it helped the business. Boom! Job offer. Companies want proof, not paper. So if you're feeling like you don't belong because you skipped the CS route, I promise you, you're not behind. In fact, you might be ahead because you're already thinking about what actually matters. Learn the right skills. Now that you know a degree isn't the golden ticket, let's talk about what actually is. Your skills. But hold up, I'm not gonna throw 57 technologies at you. You don't need to learn Rust, Docker, AWS, and neural networks just to land your first dev job. By the way, I left a link in the description for various different roadmaps, such as web dev, Python, and game development. But let's take web development for example. If you want to work a front-end or full-stack job with a company, here's a clean, beginner-friendly stack that can take you all the way to your first paycheck. HTML and CSS. This is your foundation. Build clean, responsive layouts. JavaScript, learn how to make things interactive, forms, buttons, dropdowns. React, super popular, especially with US companies. Perfect to build dynamic web apps fast. APIs, learn how to fetch data and display it. Weather app, news app, anything. Git and GitHub, essential for collaboration and version control. Whatever you do, don't skip this one. Once you've got those down, you can explore PostgreSQL or MongoDB for databases, Node.js for backend basics, and maybe Tailwind CSS to build faster and add one more thing on your resume. But don't feel pressured to learn it all right now. Start small, build things. Later in the video, I'll show you exactly how to turn these skills into projects that get you noticed, even if they're a little rough around the edges. I spent months jumping from tutorial to tutorial, thinking the next one would finally make me a real dev. Spoiler, it didn't. What actually worked? Building ugly projects, failing, and then improving. So, focus on skills that solve problems, not buzzwords that sound impressive on Reddit, Instagram, or X. Build a portfolio that proves you are job ready. All right, now let's talk about your portfolio. If your GitHub is full of to-do list version 4.3 and half-finished weather apps, don't worry. We've all been there 
But let's level it up. You don't need 10 projects, you need two or three solid ones that show you can solve real problems. These are exactly the type of projects hiring managers love to see. A product inventory dashboard, a simple booking system, a data dashboard that consumes an API, a block CMS with authentication. Projects like this show the companies you can actually work with forms, handle CRUD, use APIs, think through user experience, deploy it to the web. And here's the secret sauce. Tell the story behind each project. On your portfolio site or GitHub README, answer clearly. What problem were you solving? What tools did you use and why? What did you struggle with and how did you figure it out? Bonus points if you record a short Loom video where you walk through your app like you're demoing it to a hiring manager. Believe me, it builds trust instantly. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't worry, the readme file should be just enough. And hey, your personal website doesn't need to win a design award, it just needs to say who you are, what you can do and how to contact you. One of my favorite lines, make it clear, not clever. Have you seen my website? Simple and minimal as possible link in the description. And if you feel stuck and want some ideas on projects, you can borrow some ideas from Scrimba. Seriously, these guys have thought of everything for us. Link in the description below. Optimize your LinkedIn profile. Okay, real talk. LinkedIn is not optional anymore, especially if you want to get noticed by US companies or remote first startups. And no, you don't need to become a corporate influencer who posts selfies with inspirational captions. You just need a profile that tells a clear story about who you are, what you can do, and how you can help their company. Here's a super simple checklist. Photo. Use a clean, friendly headshot, no hoodies in the dark. Banner. Add something tech-related or even a screenshot of your portfolio site. Headline. Instead of aspiring developer, say something like, Front-end developer, React, open to remote roles. About section. Tell your story in three to five lines. Who you are, what you've built, what kind of role you want. It's like your elevator pitch, but without the elevator awkwardness. Then, and this is key, start connecting with devs, hiring managers, and recruiters. Drop a message when you connect. Comment on posts, be visible. Seriously, just spend 10 minutes on your weekends to do this and you will be surprised with the results. And if you really want to stand out, start posting once a week. Just share what you're building, what you're learning or what problem you solved this week. You don't need to be fancy, you just need to be present. Trust me, the opportunities come to the people who keep showing up. Apply smarter, not harder. All right, let's talk about the job hunt. This is where most beginners go wrong. They blast out the same generic resume to 200 companies and wonder why no one replies. Here's the better play. Apply with intention. Find companies where your skills match their stack. Tailor your resume just enough to reflect their job description. Include a short friendly intro if you're emailing or DMing someone. And if you're thinking cold messages don't work, let me show you one that landed someone a job before the job was even posted. Hey. I saw your team is hiring for a front-end dev. I'm self-taught, I've built a couple of real-world apps and I would love to contribute. Here's a link to my portfolio. It's simple, it's human, it works. Oh, and don't sleep on remote-friendly job boards. Some of the best ones are We Work Remotely, Turing, Remote OK, OTA, and WellFound. I will leave links in the description below. But here's a secret most people don't realize. A lot of jobs aren't even posted yet. If there's a startup you love or you heard of, reach out before they list a role. Send them a thoughtful message and link to your work. An ex-colleague landed a job just by messaging a founder on LinkedIn saying, I noticed your site doesn't load well on mobile. I made a quick version that's faster want me to help you fix it. That's the kind of energy that gets you hired. Freelancing as a fast track to credibility. Let's say you've built a few solid projects, maybe finished a course or two, but you still don't feel job ready. Here's a shortcut. Freelance. Even just one or two paid client projects can change how companies look at you. It shows them you can communicate, you've worked with real people, you've delivered something valuable. And the cool part, you don't need to charge $5,000 right away. You can start small $200, $300, even unpaid if it's helping a non-profit or a local business and give something real to show. This one strategy helped me personally go from 150 project to getting DMs with real offers. And it's actually easier than you think. I once built a site for my neighbor's podcast for $150. It was basic, 
but I used it in my portfolio, shared it on LinkedIn, and a month later, someone DM'd me asking if I could build theirs. That second gig paid $900. This stuff compounds fast. So how do you find your first freelance gigs? Tell friends and family what you're learning. Offer help in small online communities. Reach out to local businesses with bad websites. Believe me, there are plenty. Or use platforms like Fiverr or Upwork. Just make sure you position yourself well. Pro tip, package your offer. Instead of saying, I build websites, say, I help small businesses modernize their site to look great on mobile and convert more customers. That's not just a skill, that's a solution. And that's what people pay for, solutions. Crush the interview without faking it. All right, you've got the skills, a portfolio, maybe a client project or two, and now someone wants to talk to you. Deep breath, you don't need to become a robot, you just need to be yourself with structure. Here's what companies are usually looking for in interviews. Can you explain your thought process? Can you talk about your projects like a real human and not a tutorial narrator? Can you stay calm when something breaks or when you don't know something? One time in an early interview, I panicked when they asked me about course. I blanked completely. But instead of trying to BS my way through it, I just said, honestly, I've only scratched the surface on that, but I will dig into it tonight and follow up. Of course, I didn't get the job, but the hiring manager actually replied and said, that was one of the most honest answers I've heard, keep going. The takeaway, you don't need to know everything, you just need to show that you're coachable, curious, and not a pain to work with. Here are a few quick tips to nail your dev interview. Know your projects inside out. Be ready to explain what you built, why you built it, and what problem it solves. Practice behavioral questions, stuff like, Tell me more about the time you got stuck. How do you handle deadlines? Write them out, say them out loud, record yourself. Seriously, it helps. And if you need some help with questions, I have another video here that might help you out. Have two, three questions ready to ask them. It shows you're thoughtful and not just desperate. You're not trying to prove you're perfect. You're trying to prove you're ready to grow. Time zone advantage and communication skills. Now, if you're applying from outside the US, you might be thinking, but I'm nine hours ahead, doesn't that kill my chances? Actually, it might be just one of your biggest advantages. More and more US companies are building asynchronous teams, meaning you don't need to be on Zoom nine hours a day. What they do care about is this. Can you communicate clearly? Can you give updates without being asked? Can they trust you to move things forward while they sleep? So if you're in a different time zone, here's how to play it smart. Mention your overlap hours in your resume or intro message. Use Loom videos or screen recordings to explain tasks or updates. Be the person who over communicates, not the one who disappears. When a company sees that you're proactive, reliable and clear, they don't care if you're in Delhi, Lagos or Buenos Aires. Trust me, if you can code and communicate, you are rare and that makes you valuable. All right, let's recap real quick. You don't need a CS degree. You need proof you can solve real problems. Learn the skills that actually matter, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and Git. Build a small solid portfolio and tell the story behind your projects. Use LinkedIn to show up, not just show off. Apply smart, not desperate. Tailor your message, not just your resume. Freelance if you can. Even one client project builds trust fast. Prepare for interviews by being real, not perfect. And if you're international, don't see your time zone as a disadvantage. See it as a superpower. Now, if you found this helpful, drop a comment and let me know where you are watching this from and what step you're working on right now. I would love to hear your story. And hey, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, but most importantly, keep going. You're doing way better than you actually think. You absolute legend. Thanks for watching. I'm Pete and I'll see you on the next one.